I've always loved haunted houses. Whenever I go to any amusement park, I always go to the haunted house. If that amusement park does not have a haunted house, I do not go. Uh, something <laughs> about the allure of haunted houses really gets me. I, I love the, the, the design of it. I love how they try to scare you. Um, so the fact that I'm reviewing, we're reviewing um, Mansions of Madness, the for seventh edition uh, Call of Cthulhu by Chaosium, uh, it was a, a fun ride. If you're if you're a player, uh, we will say that this is worth getting. Um, um, get it for your your keeper. Uh, you will have a great time playing these adventures. Uh, they're just just the title alone gives you the idea that each scenario, each of the five scenarios in this book, deal with a house of some sort. That is the central theme of all these adventures. Um, so I'm gonna pass the baton to Matt, where he'll start with his thoughts on the first three scenarios. Okay, right. Good spoiler warning. Um, if you're a player, stop now. <laughs> if you're a keeper, keep watching. All right, so Mansions of Madness is an update of a classic book of scenarios that has been already published two or three times uh, for previous editions of Call of Cthulhu. Uh, they've kept two of the uh, old scenarios, kind of updated them, and they've included three new ones. So um, this book is a sequel to the adventures that appear in Doors to Darkness and Gateway to Terror. Uh, the scenarios are presented in chronological order so that you can uh, run them as a campaign if you want to. Um, they are set in the classic Call of Cthulhu period, that's the 1920s. But the, um, the book includes uh, suggestions for changing all of that. You can set them in different periods. Uh, you can take them out of order. Uh, the book includes lots of uh, information on how to incorporate them into your ongoing campaigns. Um, they're all set in the classic location, which is New England, you know. Um, <clears throat> but there's also suggestions for changing that. Which of these happen to have, which scenarios have to happen just outside a city or a small suburb or wherever. So lots of information needed so you can change these around and use them in your ongoing campaign Campaign, if you need to. Uh, the book includes lots and lots of handouts uh, as typical for a Chaosium book and six pre-generated investigators uh, for you to use. Um, there's a, each scenario opens up with a little, a little background um, a little keeper introduction and some tips for involving your investigators, getting your investigators involved in, in this scenario. So it's very useful, very, very useful. So on to the scenarios. So the first one we've got is um, Mr. Corbett. I, uh, I really like the scenario because this scenario makes the horror very personal. The idea is that Mr. Corbett is a, uh, a neighbor of, if not one of the investigators, then a member of their family. Um, you know, it offers different scenarios to involve them, but the, 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 the way the scenario works um, is that uh, Mr. Corbett, the gentleman in question, has to be connected to the player characters. It's supposed to be personal. So it's it's like, what if the mythos attacked the nice old lady next door or or not attacked, but what if the nice old lady next door was involved in the mythos? You know, someone you grew up with, someone you knew. So I, I love that. Um, I also love the fact that Mr. Corbett is not beyond redemption. He is, yes, he has definitely gotten us involved in some bad stuff. He's doing some terrible things. He's getting carried away, but, but he's still sliding down that slope. He hasn't actually, when the scenario begins, he hasn't actually done anything super terrible. He hasn't actually killed anybody yet. You know, he's making a monstrosity in his basement and he's getting, you know, his, and, his, and his emotions are all tangled up and, and he's partly possessed. Um, but, it is possible for the investigators to save him, which I think is fantastic. So um, 
the scenarios got uh, lots of backstory for the uh, for the players to investigate, lots of puzzles for them to figure out, lots of action, and you know a big horrible thing in the basement for them to confront. But uh, it's personal and it's possible to save the protagonist. So I think that's great. That makes for a fantastic scenario. So the next scenario is the Cracked and Crooked Mansion. And this is um, more of a traditional haunted house. Um, so you've got this big old mansion uh, in the suburbs and um, there is a terrible monster in it. And this adventure, the scenario is uh, survivalist horror, right? The, the creature in there is a gigantic amorphous blob that's come back from the deepest jungles. And it can move through the house, it moves through the walls, it can attack through the plumbing. It can get at the players from anywhere, filling up the room and attacking them. You know, it, it stalks them through the beginning of the adventure. Um, but when it strikes, unless the players have picked up on the clues, they are going to be completely and literally overwhelmed by the slime monster. So th this is a, is a great adventure. Um, it, it's a different feel to the horror than you get in a lot of Call of Cthulhu's because it is straight up monster hunt. But that said, there's a lot of things to investigate. There's a lot of background that the, the players can figure out. And and there's the monster's big weakness, which they have to investigate ahead of time before before they can figure that out. Um, it's another interesting uh, tidbit about this scenario is that a lot of the investigation and um, the clues and the history that they uncover about the house aren't clues at all. They're red herrings. Terrible things have happened in this house, but they're unrelated to the giant monster that's there now. <laughs> so <laughs> that could be a little bit misleading for the players. Um, so uh, again, there are uh, there are all sorts of hints at getting your players involved in this scenario. There's a there's a group of lawyers involved. A lot, a lot of these scenarios seem to have lawyers. <laughs> so. Um, but it, it was a lot of fun. It's, it's, a, it's a good, solid uh, adventure. Uh, the next scenario is called The Code. This one is, um, is again, completely different. So Lovecraft is, 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 um, is known as a great horror writer, but he was actually also a science fiction writer. A lot of his stories are just straight science fiction. You know, um, Horrible things happen and um, they've got that creeping sort of doom so they're they're in the books with all the other horror books and they're considered horror stories but they're not they're well they are horror stories but they're also science fiction stories and the code is a science fiction story so this this uh mes uh miskatonic professor invents a time traveling suit and then he goes missing and there is some almost completely mundane con artists there who are trying to steal the suit. And one of the, the, um, the professor before he went missing, uh, mailed the activation code to his time traveling suit to one of the player characters, one of the investigators. So the con artist uh, has, invent, has invited all these people over to the house pretending that the invitations came them from the professor now she's trying to discover which one of them might have the activation code and so there's a lot of um there's a lot of you know straight mundane skullduggery there the uh, the two con artists that are are they're they're murderers they're dangerous um but for the most part they're they're mundane what isn't mundane is of course the time traveling suit which actually works and if the players manage to activate it, which of course they will, um, then the scenario just can get really mind-bending and weird. You know, there's a list of uh, there's a list of um, time travel paradoxes and phenomenon that can plague the characters. But you know, once the players can figure that out, the, the biggest problem, <laughs> the biggest fun of the scenario 
is that they can travel backwards and forwards in time and, and, and change things that happened. And it really opens things up to possibly campaign wrecking paradoxes. So um, you be very careful with this one, <laughs> but uh, it could be a lot of fun, but it can be, it can also ruin your campaign. So approach with caution. <laughs> so those are the first three scenarios. Uh, Manny, you took a look at the, the last two. What'd you think? The House of Memphis, the, the title for um, Scenario 4, is uh, very intriguing, and I love that it takes place in Boston, which I am very familiar with. Um, I love City Adventures, as I've mentioned before in my other reviews. Um, the idea is that one of the great magicians of the, of the city, Memphis the Great, has disappeared. The, <laughs> there's three dead burglars, but they're not sure how does that relate to his disappearance? Was he kidnapped? Was he murdered? We don't know. <laughs> so your job as an investigator is to go and find out what's going on. And the, the scenario, oh, the way it's written, does tell you ahead of time what happened, that that um, that the uh, that the house is haunted, that uh, the ghost of Memphis is still around and is looking to do get some revenge for his murder. Um, it uh, again, this, this book gives you this chapter gives you everything you need. They got this tons of handouts, uh, tons of NPCs. You get all the information you can out, out of it. Um, and uh, again, it because it, it takes place in a city, it takes place in Boston. Um, it just it, it's a very for me, it's a very it seems very familiar. Um, and it's to me, it would be of the, of the two that I've read, uh, the easiest to to uh, game master. Um, so I, I, I enjoyed that a lot. That was fun to read. Um, the last one, so Scenario 5 deals with Arctic Macmillan. Now, the story is very intriguing. It takes place in Scotland. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an American that uh, pretty much was intrigued to retire early because he found this great land in Scotland where right next to it was a potential golf course that he always wanted to build. <laughs> so he goes there to retire and then he sends his workers to fix the land so he could get it ready. But they keep waking up to nightmares. Uh, they start quitting. They just feel that there's some bad uh, bad vibes coming from this area. So Arthur McMillian, he's a, you know, uh, wants to uh, see what the problem is. He goes out there to investigate and he disappears. <gasps> so, so, and then there's um, what you get to find out with, uh, behind the story is that during this whole time when the house was being sold, this land was being sold, there were two scientists trying to explore um, the other realm using a machine. Oh. And of course, while they were working on the machine, um, Macmillan stumbles into it and of course touches buttons they shouldn't be touching. And now they're all <laughs> lost in the other realm. <laughs> nice. And nice. and you know what happens when you leave a, a portal to another dimension open for too long, things start sure. coming out. Sure. So, your investigators trying to figure out um, what's going on in the mansion, what's going on in the golf course, while at the same time these creatures are just coming out and causing terror all over the place. So you're dealing with that while trying to solve the problem, trying to figure out from clues, from what the, the handouts that are given, from from uh, playing the game of how to stop this uh, before it, you know all Scotland gets destroyed by by the other side. Um, Again, very well written story. I, I, they're they're just so good to read, um, and um, and again, it gives you, it it doesn't railroad you, which is something I was worried about because when you're doing a murder mystery type of stories, um, there's there's one answer, and so you you kind of have to push your players in a certain direction. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was worried about there's going to be too much pushing, but no, it's it's actually to me very open ended. Very well, not open. It it's a very open story. It gives you a lot of uh, potential um, ways of of taking the adventure in case your players decide to go that way instead of that way, <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, which right. is good. That that, yeah, that was yeah. my biggest fear, but I, I didn't don't see this to being a problem. Um, both scenarios are 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 think are, are excellent, and I love that. I love that there, especially hearing from what you described also that each story is very different from one another um again as i mentioned i love haunted houses sometimes if you play the same trope too much it gets kind of boring mm -hmm. but i don't 
No, not at all. I love how, how each one is so different from one another. Sure, there's a house involved in each one, but it's just not the same. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, they're, they're good. Um, and uh, you, you're right. They are um, very um, open plan. Your, your characters can go all over the place. And at the beginning of, I mean, at the end of every adventure, there's um, a little rundown on how to continue the horror. Like what happens if the players don't destroy the monster? Or what happens if the players want to, you know, go further back and investigate where this came from? And, you know, ideas for you to expand on them. Um, quality adventures, really, really, at, you know, just hours and hours of fun. Many, many sessions. Um, so there's one thing I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, Manuel. At the beginning of the book, in the introduction, these um, uh, they describe these. Uh, these scenarios as intermediate level as opposed to beginning level um, which meant that there there weren't quite as many you know uh, tips and advice on invoking the story and 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 uh, you know guiding you through some of the rules um, now I know that you're a beginning keeper you haven't run a lot of call of Cthulhu so what did you think about these scenarios? Did you think this book gave you enough to run these? Oh yeah, more so, honestly. And I, I think when I when I saw that it was talking about uh, intermediate uh, uh, gaming, um, when it describes itself as an intermediate, not a beginner's book per se. Right. Um, uh, I was a little worried. I wasn't sure what they meant by that. But now I think what they meant more is that if you're new to role playing, you know, maybe maybe this wouldn't be as great but i for me personally um i mean i've role played for so long um there's i mean it gives you to me enough information i just it gives you a story gives you the tools you need for the story and that's all i really need the only thing i just have to be more familiar with is the rules and you know as long as i you know do my homework <laughs> read the the keeper's yeah, sure. handbook and so forth you know um it's i should be fine i have i am i'm not afraid to run any of these adventures so far I'm afraid to play them. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be afraid to run them. All right, there you go. Another quality uh, product by Chaosium. Go out and buy this book, give it to your keeper, or buy it yourself and torture your players with it. All right. Yes. Uh, I believe sales for this month of, of June 2020, hopefully this will be edited and out in time. Um, uh, I believe 25 of the sales goes to the National Bailout Organization. Excellent. Well, that's great. Now you can do some good while you're torturing your players. <laughs> All right. So yes. run out <laughs> and buy this book. Thanks for watching and uh, like and subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you next time.